We've all done it. We've collected a bunch of model kits we intended to build, and then we never built them, and we thought, well, maybe one day in retirement. But then you don't get to enjoy your vintage airplanes. But I may have found a great alternative. If you've watched Retro Blasting for any length of time, you're probably already aware that I love World War II aviation. I also love World War II history, but aviation is my sweet spot. That's what I really enjoy studying and learning about. And I also love toys. So when those two things intersect, I really get excited. I'm all over it. And the challenge has always been, well, how feasible is it? You know, with the model kits, which I tried to do in my adolescence, when I had spare time and didn't have to, you know, have a job and pay a mortgage and all that kind of stuff. It was, I got to get the glue. I got to get the paint. I got to find the time. I need the exacto knives. Then you get into putty and then you get into sanding and then you get into airbrushing. And, and it's, it's a, it's a big mess. It's, it's, it's something that I couldn't do as a hobby and also do YouTube as a hobby. So, you know, you, you end up deciding, you know, what to prioritize. And then you have stacks and stacks and stacks of unfinished model kits that you'll get to when I'm 70 and I have nothing else to do and nobody wants to watch me on YouTube anymore. Um, a few years ago, 21st Century Toys offered me an option, which were their one in 18 scale pre-made action figure sized uh, fighter planes. This is the P-40 Flying Tiger from that line. And I was really excited about these because I thought, well, they're pre-painted. They look great. They fit a G.I. Joe scale action figure. They're to scale with the figure. These are, these are amazing, but they were really hard to find and they're really big. And so you end up with three or four of them and realize if you get any more, you're not going to be able to keep them anywhere. Uh, which I already have that problem. So that also wasn't really an option. So I'll put this down here. So then I thought, well, maybe I can buy some high-end, you know, pre-built models like the ones that are sold on Corgi and Franklin Mint and uh, Armor and that kind of stuff. But you always push that out. It's like, well, I'll, I'll get to that when, you know, I have $200 burning a hole in my pocket and nothing better to do with it. And then I go to England this summer and we're in York and by uh, Monk's Bar, which is one of the gates, one of the, the medieval gates into the city, right there underneath Monk's Bar was a model shop, like an old school model kit shop with model trains and model planes and model cars. And I was over the moon. I thought, wow, this is cool. I just went in to look like I, I, I didn't go in intending to buy anything. And I saw the Airfix quick build set, which I'd never seen before. I was like, what is this? Because a few live streams ago, you might recall on the Lego live stream, I had talked about, I would, I would love it if Lego would do vintage airplanes, specifically the Spitfire, things like that. And, and some people on the chat said, no, they're probably not going to do that because it's based on, you know, wartime event. I said, okay. Someone had alerted me to a uh, European company that's doing Lego-like toys. Um, and they do war, war planes, war, war tanks, vehicles, things like that. And I hadn't really pulled the trigger on those because when you see them in Lego form, they don't look quite right. I mean, they're, they're neat, but they're not quite there. But Airfix... I mean, they're the name in model kits. I mean, they, they are, especially for, for uh, Warbirds, they are the best. And I thought Airfix has taken what is essentially Lego technology and combined it to create model kits like that you can put together like a Lego kit. But when you finally get it together, barring a few minor compromises, it actually looks like an airplane. It doesn't have the studs all over the top or anything like that. It's, it's actually meant to come together as a whole and look like 
a Spitfire or a Mustang or a Metroschmitt or whatever you want to want to buy. And I, I couldn't help myself. I ended up buying three to bring back. They are, I mean, they are incredible. I brought, I bought two uh, Spitfire variants. I, I bought uh, the D-Day version, uh, which you see here. This is the D-Day version. Any um, any D-Day airplane, you can always tell uh, from the Allied Forces because it has these these stripes. And then I bought the standard Mark I Battle of Britain Spitfire, and I bought the Metroschmitt, which is meant to depict the Metroschmitt uh, 109E, which would have been the Metroschmitt that faced off against the Spitfire in the Battle of Britain. When I got back to the hotel, I had intended to just leave them in the box and not build them until I got back, but I couldn't help myself, and I started building them right there in the hotel room. And when I when I put the first one together, it was really solid. I mean, it was, it, it's a it's a hefty, hefty piece. Pull this off the thing again. This is a hefty little airplane. I mean, it, it's not it's not in danger of coming apart. I, it, I was really excited about it. I mean, yes, it has some compromises because this is a complex engineering system. I'm sure for Airfix, they have to find ways to reuse parts. So in the case of say the Spitfire and the Metroschmitt, you know, they clearly engineered the Spitfire Mark I first, the earliest version of the Spitfire. And then when they did the later uh, D-Day version, they kept the same body. So you don't have some of the variations, like you don't have a four prop, a four blade prop. You don't have the narrower tail fin, uh, things like that. And in the case of the Metroschmitt, while you do have subtler sculpting on the uh, prop hub to give you that sort of center cannon, you don't really have uh, an, uh, an accurately shaped nose cone uh, for the prop that would match with the E. They, they've clearly adapted this from the prop they made for the other planes. But again, you're buying this knowing that it's built on Lego style building bricks technology. And the other great part about it is that you don't need paint because, and this is one of the coolest things about this. I, I just, I was blown away when I realized this. All of the planes are designed so that the Lego panels go together as the colors of the camouflage. So as you're stacking all this stuff together and building the airplane out of approximately 35 to 40 pieces, all of the camo patterns are pre-decoed into the parts. So the parts are all irregularly shaped like a jigsaw puzzle. And so you then, once you get it together, all of the camo is in the plastic, which it's just, it's such a great idea. Now there is one drawback uh, to this, and I wish that they had, I wish they had reconsidered how they were uh, going to do the, the the livery, but they decided to do livery as traditional decals. And I get why, because it was probably more expensive to airbrush the deco onto the the plane when the plane was going to be on these little parts. It wasn't going to be pre-built as a whole, and so it was probably a lot more difficult to. Well, you're going to need one quarter of the chevron on this piece, and a, you know, third of it over here, and probably got really complex. The disadvantage, of course, is that once you build them, and then you put the stickers on, you really can't unbuild the airplane without having to remove the stickers and making a mess. So, in in traditional Airfix style, they are intended to be model kits. They're just simpler model kits for the less discerning uh, Warbird enthusiast or somebody who just wanted a simpler option for the time being like myself. That being said, I have toyed with the idea of maybe using an X-Acto knife now that the decals are in place to cut along the panel seam lines so that the the decals are permanently on the pieces and then maybe I can disassemble them, but I haven't gone that far yet. I don't know what, what that would end up looking like. 
Ultimately though, these are incredible. They have perfect lines. There's gonna be a little torquing and twisting you've gotta to do to make sure that the tail fin lines up at the right angle because everything's you know built as Lego style bricks. So you're gonna to have to fiddle with it a little bit. But ultimately what you end up with is you end up with a beautiful representation of the Spitfire airplane or the Metcher Smith or something like that. It just looks incredible. I mean, and you can play with it as a toy if you want to. You know, it's it's very solid. It's not it's not gonna you know fall apart. I mean, it, it it's really really well done, and that doesn't change. It's not just the Spitfire that's like that. The Metzger it's solid as a rock. It's not going anywhere. Nothing's fallen off of it. They've really designed these well. The only disadvantage, of course, is that they are pilotless. There are no minifigure style characters that come with these because they weren't built to that scale. Now, from what I understand, the European uh, brick manufacturer that I talked about at the beginning of the video um, that does airplanes in a Lego brick style uh, from World War II and does tanks and jeeps and all that kind of stuff, they have minifigures to go with theirs. But I don't think the end product looks as good as this. I need to get a few and find out. But these are just so well done and I'm thrilled to own them, especially especially the Battle of Britain rivals. I am so excited to have these. I wish I had more from the set, uh, the, the, the quick build Airfix uh, series. I'm gonna try and track them down. But in the meantime, I, I, I can't wait to find a home for these somewhere here in the studio. They're so much easier to manage than the larger uh, 21st century toys uh, airplanes, not as accurate, not as cool as far as wow factor, but just to be able to kind of casually pick one up and you get the fun of building it like a model kit. It really does straddle that line. You know, it's it's not just a pre-built toy. It's not just a, a sort of vague representation out of raw Lego style bricks. It It manages to become the airplane in the final build. But this is for aviation and model kit enthusiasts. Do not expect these to have interchangeable parts between them like a Lego style system. These are meant to be purpose built into the planes they represent. So cross, uh, cross pollination of the parts is probably not likely, but why would you want that when you know, you've got just these absolutely gorgeous representations of the airplanes. So yeah, I had no idea I was gonna run into these and I'm so glad that Airfix has gone down this path because it, you know, it allowed me to take home some of my favorite airplanes and put them together without the headache of paint and model cement and putty and all that kind of stuff that I have done in the past and I'm willing to do in the future, but I'm not willing to do it right now. I'm just gonna happily collect up my model kits and save them for when I retire. Um, but in the meantime, these are a great option. They give me that thrill of seeing my, my favorite, you know, airplane, the Spitfire in multiple decos in the proper profile with those elliptical wings. Oh, it's just gorgeous. So if you are interested in this kind of stuff or you're interested in Lego style toys, you might want to check one of these out. I mean, they're not very expensive. They're under, they're well under 20 bucks. I think they're about uh, the, the, exchange rate being what it is. I mean, these were 12 pounds 99 a, a piece, which isn't terrible. Um, I think that accounts uh, now to about 15 or $16, maybe, um, maybe a little higher, maybe it's under 20 bucks. So yeah, I am uh, thrilled with these and I'm so glad that I was able to bring these back. Um, so hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching this video and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Yeah, so I'm flying in a Spitfire today on Battle of Britain Day. Same day, Sunday, as it was in 1940, at the same time that they engaged the German Luftwaffe that morning. It's pretty crazy, pretty exciting. The, the, the Spitfire I'm flying in is actually a Spitfire that fought on D-Day. It did a number of missions uh, on D-Day in 1944. Uh, just, it's going to be great. Are you excited? Yeah, I'm excited. Are you nervous? Yeah, I'm nervous, but, but, <laughs> but in a good way.